It's seen magical moments. It's seen legendary talent. It's been the home away from home for thousands down in the garden in black. And like the people that make it so special, this place has grown. It's matured. It's coming to its own. But to appreciate where it is, you have to know exactly where it came from. They used to play the games on the campus, Milton Field, where the Russell House is now. During the Depression, they started a WPA project, which a Work Progress Administration. They would build public buildings to give people jobs. And Carolina Stadium was built for the city of Columbia as Columbia Municipal Stadium. Soon after it was finished, they gave it to the University of South Carolina. Columbia Municipal Stadium held 17,500 fans. It was renamed Carolina Stadium in 1941. The stadium's main draw came on Thanksgiving Day, or Big Thursday as it was known then, when the Gamecocks held their annual game against the Clemson Tigers. And in 1946, it became obvious that 17,500 seats were not going to be enough. A bunch of counterfeiters came in and sold a lot of tickets to the game. So on game day, they didn't know who had real tickets and who had counterfeit tickets. And so they came and finally they just crushed into the stadium. And the only vacant space in the stadium was the field itself. And they had to move spectators off of the field several times so they wouldn't interfere with the play. Over the next decade, the university filled in both end zones, creating first a horseshoe and then a bowl. These expansions brought the capacity to 43,000, where it stayed for nearly 20 years. The 1960s brought the arrival of Paul Dietzel, a big name coach that had previously won a national championship at LSU. He quickly turned around Carolina's fortunes on the field, winning the ACC championship in 1969. But with increased success, the need for an upgraded facility became apparent. I think we will find that it's not a question of whether we can afford it, but whether we can afford not to do it and to do, and to do this facility with urgency. And just to start from scratch really didn't seem possible or plausible for us because it costs the doggone much money, so we've decided to do it in stages. And the first stage, as you see it here, is to tear out one side of the stadium and add this uh, side, which actually will hold just at 30,000. When one addition is made, we will have about 55,000 plus. Now when we put the other side in, when we put the other side in, then the stadium will seat about 70,000 plus. In other words, just over 70,000. Stage one began soon after, and the stadium began its most important transformation. We will be replacing all those wooden splintered seats with brand new aluminum seats throughout the entire stadium. And that, of course, will give the inside of the old stadium a brand new look. And what we are doing now, of course, is continuing and finishing the stadium on the west side right on down to the sideline level. This actually gives us a complete one side of the modern stadium here at Carolina. This transformation could not have been possible though without proper financing. And the family that came through would become a household name among Gamecock faithful. Tom Bryce, a Carolina football player in the 1920s, and his wife, Martha Williams Bryce, whose family operated the Williams Furniture Company in Sumter, made a $2.75 million donation. And on September 9, 1972, the home of the Gamecocks officially became known as williams Bryce Stadium. For over a decade, the stadium stood asymmetrical in the Columbia skyline, awaiting the completion of Stage 2 of Dietzel's expansion plan. It was a crazy looking stadium, you know, a high rise on one side and a, a low rise on the other. But, uh, but it at least gave them more seats and then we started 
getting more fans in. In 1982, williams Bryce finally received its other half. A new upper deck was completed over the existing east stands, but the construction was quickly put to the test as Carolina hosted Southern Cal during the 83 season. After an upset victory over the Trojans, fans reported movement in the east upper deck, and Coach Joe Morrison would later be quoted saying, if it ain't swaying, we ain't playing. While the structure was ruled safe and later reinforced, Morrison's quote lives on to this day as a rallying cry for the Gamecocks. The 1990s saw more improvements as Carolina joined the SEC. Club seats, suites, and a new press box came in 1995. But another major expansion came a year later when an upper deck was added to the south end zone. This pushed the stadium's capacity over 80,000 where it stands today. With a stadium that rivaled the nation's elite, it was time to address the surroundings. 2012 saw the opening of Gamecock Park, creating a premier tailgating venue and the perfect setting for Carolina's Gamecock Walk. The stadium's front door also received a facelift in the form of a 36-foot tall, 124-foot wide video board, which not only provides up-close instant replays for fans on the inside, but a beautiful welcome mat for the home of the Gamecocks. And in 2015, the evolution of the stadium continued with the addition of Springs Brooks Plaza. There's a lot of great venues in the Southeastern Conference, and certainly what we've done here at Williams Bryce with the Springs Brooks Plaza Gamecock Park across the street has elevated the excitement, the energy that we'll have for our fans and our boosters and our alumni when they visit and come see the Gamecocks play. With several nods to its storied past, williams Bryce Stadium now looks toward the future. It's often said there's no place like home. The University of South Carolina and its fans would certainly agree.